Good morning, everyone. Seamus McCauley, CEO of Bright Green. And for those of you who saw my introductory video following my appointment last week, you will have noted that it's my intention to publish a weekly vlog. And this is the first installment of that vlog, so you're very welcome to it. The rationale behind communications like this are really to add some colour and context and depth to the bright green journey so far, uh, as well as exploring some of the opportunities that lie ahead for the company in the months and years to come. So like any good story, the best place to start is at the start. And when we think about bright green and its reason to base its operations in New Mexico, there were two driving factors behind that decision. First of all, there was the opportunity to acquire an already existing infrastructure that could be adapted and amended to our purposes. But second of all, the climate in New Mexico is well known as being conducive to growing cannabis, given the volume of light and the general climate. And so uh, the decision was taken to base uh, uh, within New Mexico. And New Mexico is one of the 38 states in the United States to have legalized uh, the use of medical cannabis. But it's not Bright Green's intention to participate in those state programs, but rather the company is focused on federal authorization through its memorandum of agreement, which it signed with the Drug Enforcement Administration in May of 2021. Really, this facilitates Bright Green uh, uh, with, as the holder of a DEA registration to move and supply cannabis and products and derivatives uh, across the United States, as well as exporting to the international uh, uh, markets. So uh, that really began the journey of adapting the, the current infrastructure to make it fit for purpose and to uh, ensure that we met all of the regulatory frameworks, which are, are, are uh, there are many and uh, uh, there's a certain complexity to each of them. Uh, for example, we have the Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, we have the Controlled Substances Act, we have 21 CFR and Chapter 2. Uh, um, and because Bright Green will also manufacture some of our own medicines on site, we, uh, of course, uh, uh, must be compliant with FDA requirements. So uh, GMP compliance is a big factor and a big feature. But of course, uh, as well as we, uh, uh, given that we are ex uh, exporting uh, internationally, we must make sure that our quality management system is fit for purposes for those other jurisdictions as well. So the company signed its memorandum of agreement with the DEA in May of 2021, and that really initiated the work uh, of converting the current facilities to make sure that they were fit for purpose and complied with all of those regulatory frameworks. That includes the equipment uh, and the extraction equipment, as well as our processes. And we have spent a lot of time and significant amount of input into creating our standard operating procedures to demonstrate the compliance with the regulatory frameworks as mentioned above. So um, <clears throat> I have assessed where the company currently are at on that journey and I am very satisfied and, uh, and really quite excited. And um, what that DEA registration will provide, it, it, was, it will facilitate Bright Green really being the only publicly traded company in the United States federally authorized to move cannabis uh, across the, the nation as well as export internationally. We have over a million square feet of greenhouse so you can appreciate the work that had to go in to making sure that number one we, we built our facilities in accordance with the requirements but second of all that our operations and our QMS are fit for purpose that will really allow us um, um, to scale up our operation and begin supplying product and uh, uh, as well as uh, commencing work on our own uh, development and human medicine development programs. So <clears throat> hopefully this gives you a little bit of context and a little bit of background as to the work that has gone on as we prepare for uh, uh, that DEA audit and the registration of our license, which really will be a major milestone for the company. As mentioned, it, it will facilitate Bright Green being the only publicly traded company with that federal authorization and the ability to supply to those research institutes across the country and indeed internationally as well. So a lot of uh, focus currently and a lot of attention is being placed on those final stages to make sure that we welcome the DEA uh, with confidence and uh, uh, secure the necessary registration. So following that, uh, uh, we will then harvest, plant, 
and harvest and uh, extract our first uh, uh, product, which again will be a very exciting milestone for the company. So as you can see, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of work has gone in over the last uh, uh, kind of 18 months to ensure that really the facilities are fit for purpose. Uh, a lot of effort has gone into uh, uh, building those out and fitting those out to the required standards. And I could not be more excited uh, uh, to be able to share the news at the appropriate time on the successful uh, completion of that registration of the license. So uh, hopefully that gives you that little bit of colour and a little bit of context on one aspect of the business. Uh, several more to follow. Next week we'll focus on the FDA and the requirements as well as some of the products that, that Bright Green will be uh, developing and putting through that regulatory framework. And also then uh, we'll, we'll focus as well on the EB5 programme with an update and a little bit more colour and a little bit more context on our fundraising activities uh, as those progress as well. So um, hopefully this is useful and um, um, hopefully some useful information. Um, for today, the key message is that a lot of effort and a lot of work has gone into ensuring that our facilities and or, or, or procedures are fit for purpose and meet the, the necessary regulatory requirements. And uh, uh, I'm sure when you understand the accolade that that will bring to the company, you'll also understand the effort and attention that it warrants, ensuring that we get that done properly and correctly and uh, and make sure that we're fit for purpose um, for that audit as and when it occurs. What I would advise you to do is keep an eye on the website as well as any press releases, uh, because of course we will share that good news just as soon as we uh, complete the necessary steps in the registration process. Uh, hopefully this is useful guys and uh, I hope you have a good week and uh, look forward to the second instalment uh, next Monday when we will focus on the FDA and some of the uh, product pipeline and some of the efforts that Bright Green are making uh, to make sure that we're compliant with the FDA requirements. Thanks uh, for tuning in and uh, I look forward to uh, the next instalment next Monday. Thank you.